on salvage hunters. In Kent, Drew makes himself at home at a dealer's house. So in Wales, this is called camouflage. <laughs> He faces top-end prices at an upmarket showroom in Gloucestershire. I paid a lot of money for, for them. Did you? So I've got to pay for your mistakes. <laughs> Someone has, yeah. <laughs> and has to haggle hard with a furniture enthusiast in Scotland. How much is that? Uh, it's £600. Is it more like 400 quid because it's in it? Eh, uh, no. Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Well, that's pretty spectacular. Oh, God, that's fantastic. Beautiful. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. That's really nice. Palais Vue Francais? It's like an adventure. You yeah, have for 600 quid. Yeah. Yeah. Done. And there's nothing he won't buy. Oh, yeah, look at that. Love him. With help from Rebecca. That's Modern really flat. cool. Nice, isn't it? I love it. And a team of renovators. He transforms thousands of items from junk to gems. Hello, Drew Pritchard. At Drew Pritchard's HQ in Wales, the team is busy unloading, restoring and photographing the hundreds of items that pass through the warehouse every week. Yeah, it's not Drew, it's Carl. I'm taller and better looking. Um, I can't work this. Microwave. The poppity ping. The poppity ping. As well from microwave. Is it? <laughs> and, as usual, the office is sales central. Um, so it's £800. I'll get that sorted out for you. it! But before items can go up on the website, they must get inspected by the man himself. Only the best will do. English Regency 1810, 1815, somewhere in that bracket there. And then you get Mrs Regency. And she sits from there, like that, so her dress doesn't get wet on the grass. I've had loads of Regency readed stuff, but I've never had one of these. And not in that condition, that's the best one for sale in the world right now. Quality really is everything in this business. When I'm talking about quality, I'm not talking about the finest 18th century marquetry furniture. What I'm talking about is the quality in anything. Steelwork, ceramic, upholstery, woodwork, anything at all. Sometimes I'm able to find things that, that don't need any work. Um, or other times you can spot it in a junk shop. And Drew's heard about a dealer with high-end quality pieces. But there can be a high price to pay for excellence. Sometimes going to a dealer that deals in top-end quality, the price points are sort of slightly too high for Drew, but it depends how far that dealer's willing to, to drop. It can be a bit of a risk. Drew's driving over 300 miles away to Royal Tunbridge Wells in Kent, and a man whose name makes him an unforgettable dealer in the trade. We're off to meet a guy called Street Marburg. Now, I've seen his stand at the Baxi Dexter Fair that I do, and the last time I saw it, I thought, I need to get to know this guy and I need to go and see his stuff. And he deals from home. And I think nearly everything in there's for sale. So if you've seen him uh, at the, uh, the exhibition and but met, don't know him, he just does very, very good things. Tunbridge Wells is a beautiful town just 40 miles from London, founded because of the iron-rich spring water sourced here. The population has been growing since the 17th century. The Georgian shop facades and the town's proximity to the capital make it a popular spot with tourists. Just north of the town centre is the home and showroom of antique dealers Street Marburg and Charlotte Casa de Juice. Well, end of the 70s, came down to Sunbridge Wells and through a friend of mine met a couple of dealers. I progressed from early on dealing in fine English mahogany and walnut and then got into the decorative. Street really knows about antiques, proper antiques. My style is very much the decorative look. So he knows what's right, what's good, what's good. Definitely. But we do try to be approachable and have quite Price, a broad ranging a point. Um, kind of stock. The real difference between dealers and collectors, dealers always want to sell. Yeah. Collectors don't, and I'm certainly a dealer. He never lets me keep things. It's really annoying. So we'll buy the stuff. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> no, that is <laughs> not true. <laughs> When we buy, we buy because we love it and we're passionate about it. Hello. Hi. Hi, Drew. Charlotte. Good How to meet you. Street, 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 Street,
reclaimed furniture, you've got modernist lighting, you've got, you've got it all. It's a very, very cool look. Price-wise, I don't know if I can be able to buy anything, frankly. Um, that's my only concern, whether there's going to be a margin left in it for me, I really don't know. So tell me how, how this works then. Everything for sale? Pretty Indeed. Much. It's a great look. Thank you. Really nice. Really nice. How do you like it? Educated and cool. Oh, my God. I like that. I'm going to put that yeah, on the website. Yeah. There's a knowledge and an educated eye looking at this stuff. Real knowledge. The quality of items is so good. So good. As the items are already restored and ready to sell, Drew needs to find pieces he can get at a good price and still add value to. So there's a few nice bits in here already. Love the lamps. Oh, yeah, tell me about they're these. really cool. They're bumbling, the design. Were conceived by Swedish lighting expert Anders Pearson. They're part of the bumbling lighting range, which has been recognised for their simple design and sleek finish. Now considered a design classic, they could be worth around £900. There's a pair of table lights. The quality is second to none. Uh, extraordinary form, good size, chrome base... Uh, and then there's sort of a radial design in the centre, like a fan in the centre. Definitely want to own those. The scale's great. The shape's superb. We're asking twelve fifty for those. Right. Um, we start discussing prices, and I thought, oh, we're a bit out of the game here. We're not going to be able to do anything. That's it. These are trade prices straight these are No, no. Price. The bumbling lights, the trade on that is eight, on these is 800. As Drew's a fellow dealer, Charlotte and Street are willing to cut him a deal and sell at trade prices. They're a third lower than retail and more in line with what Drew was hoping. And then the trade prices come out and I'm thinking, wow, great prices, fabulous items, lovely people. But Drew wants to see what else might be worth bidding on before he commits to the lights. Just seen those. Oh, they're, they're amazing. Fabulous, they're aren't they? They're originally covered with a horrible linoleum. And they're made of ash, and they're 1950s. How oh, cool God, are they? Oh, God, they're really they're good. cool. They're I mean, they're, they're please. different. Uh, please. Yeah. So we're in Wales. This is called camouflage. <laughs> 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 A pair of open uh, armchairs over there. They look great. They're superb. As a design, it works. And my clients, they want new and interesting things. And that is that. This pair of reading chairs is made of ash and a French design. Now recovered in Icelandic wool, there's a recent trend for pieces like this, meaning they could be worth over £2,000. What sort of price? The trade on those is 1600 <laughs> It's your thinking face. I am. I'm trying to think. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to work out a very nice way of buying two things and knocking money off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're dealers, far away. You know, that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, yeah. With the, the lamps and the chairs, I thought, well, I want to buy both of those, but I really need to drive the price down a bit. It's business. I'm here to buy for business. Um, I'm wondering if that pair of chairs and that pair of lamps can be two grand. Salvage expert Drew Pritchard is in Tunbridge Wells at the home and showroom of decorative antiques dealers Street Marburg and Charlotte Cassida Juice. Ooh, lots and lots of nice things. Drew loves their mix of high-end, design-led quality items and is trying to do a deal across a pair of chairs and some 1960s lamps. I'm wondering if that pair of chairs and that pair of lamps can be two grand. Uh, That's quite a stretch. That is a stretch. I mean, I would do a deal for the chairs and the lamps for two, three. Uh, mm. And they've made everything very, very viable. I'd have really liked to pay two grand for the lamps and the chairs. I was trying to do a little bit of a bundle deal. Got them for two, three. I, I'm all right. I'm, I'm happy with that. You don't have to put wax of profit on it, you know, because there's not much work. There's no work to do on the chairs at all. Fabulous things. Have to have them. And almost straight away, Drew spots another design gem. The coffee table, that small one, the yeah, side table, the table. That's Maison table. Jensen, that one. OK. It's really cool, I love that. So the trade on that is 300. Well, I'm going to say yes to that. There's a reason why that particular designer and maker are better than the norm. The top, for instance, has got those small little barrel edges just to hold the glass in place. The way the tapering legs go and then change colour halfway through. Just the right height. You sit there in your low chair with that there. 
This small coffee table is from Paris-based interior designers Maison Jensen, founded in the late 19th century by Dutch designer Jean-Henri Jensen. He blazed a trail in creating quality furniture, mixing traditional and modern styles. The designs are hugely sought after, and this piece could be worth around 500 pounds. There's lots of them out there. Don't care, it's a really nice example. 300 pounds for a little table, that's fine. There are five spaces to browse through, so Drew wants to have a look in the room next door. Oh, look at that. That's a cracking console. Is that down to you? It is. Of course. Yes. 1760? I reckon a bit later, 1780, George III. Mm. I like this as well. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's super cool, isn't it? It all works. Yeah. Illumination. <laughs> we are bilingual, we talk. It's 800. Yeah. And it's all original. It's a lovely thing. It's empty. <laughs> Sorry about that. You can put a bottle of wine in there if you like it. <laughs> the colour in there looks like lead, but it's not, obviously, it's just painted. The actual liner. I think that is wood. It's wood. Is it? I know, it's but wood. it's, it's yeah, painted yeah. to look like lead, yeah. which I've not seen before. You know, I've never noticed that. Yeah. Such a strange oh, design. And do you think it had a pediment of some sort on there? No. No sure? way. Absolutely okay. not. I'll tell you why, because you can see how the wood is done. I bet you. Tree. Beautiful shape. Great size, nice quality. It couldn't be more British if you tried. Um, handsome little beastie, and I really want it to be mine. This Regency case could be a creation of British designer and architect Charles Heathcote Tatham, hundreds. These boxes were meant to be kept close to the dining table or even under it. This one is a beautifully preserved example of 19th century fine dining and could be worth around 1,500 pounds. Go on, 750. And there's, there's got to be a profit in it for Definitely. that. Definitely. I'm getting my knuckles ready. Good. Thank you. Well, Thank you. Knuckles. <laughs> I'm over the moon with it. Super authentic, totally original. Very, very happy. Can we have a look outside? Absolutely. I, I want to see. I want to see your garden office. I know it's cool, isn't it? I spend my life going through demolition sites and uh, antique fairs and, and warehouses and scribbling around in all the muck. It's quite nice occasionally to walk on the other side. And Morris of Glasgow. Really? Yeah. And if you look in here, you can see it's signed. Oh, fab. So it's a really nice nick. It's really pretty, isn't it? Yeah. I love this little period of design. Uh, mid-60s, uh, English, well, Scottish, in fact. But this one's just got a little bit extra. Great colour, superb legs, full-length hinge. The, 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 the veneer on the top and the doors is fantastic. Open the door, it's signed. It's got it all. It's a style that has inspired many imitations, but the Morris Group was one of the first to produce affordable, quality furniture for their home. Although founded in the 19th century, they're best known for their 20th century creations, which are considered to be well-made design classics. This sideboard could be worth around £600. Well, that's coming to Wales. Thank okay. you very much. Knuckles, actually. Boom. Everything's been stand out. I mean, it's been so good. The little cellarette, I think, has been my favourite piece. Very trad. Uh, but then also the, the Morris sideboard from Glasgow as well. £300 sideboard, but it's a great piece of design, you know? The quality of items is so good. All of it's good. Some dealers try to play it very, very cool, too cool, but uh, in my opinion, the way Drew does it, I think, is the best way. because I feel honest. It's honest, it's yeah. very straightforward, and it's direct, and you know exactly where you stand. It, it's OK to say I really like this. Yeah. That's fine. Well, it doesn't mean we're going to double the price. It just means that we're really glad he likes what we do. I made the van look a lot better inside. <laughs> it must look like a little boutique it in the back of the van. The boutique right? look is like popular it. within white, white vans. You know? <laughs> I am happy. With Drew's hall being unloaded back at base, Rebecca's keen to verify the Morris sideboard. For over 130 years, they've been the benchmark for well-made, long-lasting and simply designed furniture, even producing pieces for the Royal Ships. Morris of Glasgow, uh, I've just been reading up about them, um, fascinating uh, company. In 1947, they were asked to make um, a bedroom suite for the Queen and Prince Philip. It's sort of generations of the Morris family. Um, and this look now is so hot. Just wanted to check that we've got the proper manufacturing mark, which we have. Drew's done a really good job getting hold of this. 
if quality of this is absolutely bob on. To search out quality in all its different forms, Drew travels the length and breadth of the country. You don't really choose places that to find quality. It's just everywhere, and you've got to go everywhere to find it. One good place that I've always sort of sought out was places that are in the middle of nowhere. The places where nobody else would go, go and wander around there. He's driving over 300 miles away to Scotland. We are in Dumfries, and it's a fair old drag up here. So it what's is, it yeah. taken us in it the is. month? It's about four and a half hours, five four hours. Five hours, five hours. Uh, we're off to see a guy called Tom. I've heard his name bandied around the antiques trade for years. He works from home. I just have a good feeling about it. He's been around doing what he's doing in an awful long time. He's Anybody already... can do a house clearance. It takes a lot more to recognise quality. He normally yeah. did quite well in Scotland. Dumfries and Galloway sits near the border with England in the Scottish lowlands. The area is sculpted by beautiful national parks, lochs and forests, all teeming with wildlife. Just a few miles to the east of Galloway Forest Park is Tom Corry, a farmer, hoarder and furniture dealer whose passion for antiques means his premises are bursting at the seams. I've been dealing in antiques for oh, roughly 30 years. Well, like old things, find um, antiques very interesting. Find old things that are down in their luck even more interesting, whether that's furniture, houses or whatever. They can hand furniture in my house. I might as well have something good. Tom? Morning. Blimey. Got some stock. How long have you been here? Uh, I've lived here all my life. Um, we've been here 140 years altogether. 140 years? Wow. Yeah. It's looking well on it. Uh, <laughs> it's not what I expected when I've walked in here. Um, there's hundreds of derelict, dead and dying pieces of furniture scattered around the entire yard. What I'm looking for today is just the really good gear. So it's the luck of the draw. He might have been onto a house clearance the day before and he's got a fabulous pair of chairs or sideboard or table or whatever. If you're first in, you get it. What I'm up here looking for is your classic sort of country house furniture, to be honest with you. Powered is what I'm looking for. Yes. Um, do, you do you have any in? That would be whatever it would be. Renowned for creating quality, long-lasting, beautiful pieces, these are wonderful examples of British craftsmanship. That's quite a decent table, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that's a Howard table, yeah. We've literally just arrived. We've walked from there to there, and I said, you haven't got any Howard furniture, have you? And then the next thing I go, oh, that's a nice table. And he goes, that's a Howard. You couldn't make it up. Howard & Sons is a Victorian furniture maker based in London, still going strong today. Their pieces are known for expert craftsmanship and original design. This is a gaming or card table, typically covered in green baize and used for Victorian entertainment. Still in high demand, Howard Furniture is a great seller, and this table could be worth around £1,500. The quality is, su is superb, and the form and the whole scale of it is so nice. It's got the, 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 the twisted, barley twist um, uh, legs, but they, they widen as they go towards the bottom. Real nice sign of quality on there. And it's ebonised as well. You've got a pine top, which would be the norm, because you wouldn't see it, you know, if you have the, have the bays across the top of it. So, um, all in all, um, spectacularly good find. That's not bad. What's that going to cost? Uh, £400. Salvage ace Drew Pritchard is at furniture enthusiast Tom Corrie's in Scotland, picking through a lifetime's collection. Antiques and curios are spilling out of every nook and cranny. Drew's after quality items as they're guaranteed sellers and always do well on the website. He stumbled straight across an incredible 19th century gaming table by renowned furniture makers Howard and Sons. That's not bad. What's that going to cost? Uh, £400. Pounds. Good man. The top, what I think we'll do with that, I think uh, Craig will go over the top again with a baize. And I think... I don't want to put red bays. I don't want to put green bays on it. It's boring. I want to put red bays on it for, you know, some, something different. Um, and you've got a cracking table, very saleable. The table is so well made that, incredibly, it survived being kept outside in the Scottish weather. Drew's off to a great start in his hunt for quality, and he's on a roll. 
Oh, hang on, actually, that. Yeah, yeah I like it. It's better carving than some. Truncated? Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the carving of, of the head, so of the elephant and the trunk, it's just a bit better than the normal. Normally they're really naive and they've been knocked out as quick as possible to sell to tourists. That one's just a little bit better, and that's what we're always looking for. This hand-carved, ebonised elephant table dates from around the late 19th century. It was fashionable for the upper classes to bring mementos like these back from trips to the Far East. There is one wooden tusk missing, but the rest of the table is in good condition and could be worth around £500. That would be 140 Yeah, it's all flat. Thank you, man. Thank you. Um, that's a quite a good start. We've only been this, here two minutes. Yeah, and it is quite a lot do... there. Well, with two quality antiques plucked from the stacks of furniture, Drew continues his hunt for top-notch stock. Where next? That stock one over in the stable. Yes. I don't think there's been a cow in that stable for a while. Uh, we keep horses in stables up this way. It's maybe a whale thing keeping the cows in the stable. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> to the untrained eye, this looks like a total disastrous mess of crappy old furniture lying around. But for me, this is like a treasure trove. This is an absolute little gold mine. Ah, that's nice. Nice chair. Easy repair. Now, that's, that's not your line, Drew. Isn't it, right? You should be telling me how difficult the repair is. That's a terrible, difficult repair you have. Yes, I <laughs> How much is this £500 chair, then? Uh, it's £750. That's my surcharge. <laughs> In the back of this box trailer, he's got, he's got a very tasty-looking Grecian Revival armchair. Great. Great leg. Caster. Really original. If it was an 18th century one, I'd be falling over myself to buy it. But it's not. It's a 19th century one, and it's got a couple of faults, and it's 750. So there's nowhere really left for me to go on that one. I have to just walk away from it. Having tackled some of the furniture outside... Where should we go through? At these buildings, or...? Um, yes. Drew now wants to get into some of the outbuildings. I am ridiculously, childishly excited about going into the barns. Uh, <sighs> why do I love it so much? I just do. And you're looking for the tiniest little bit of quality sticking out. What I need to do is get up so I can have a look over the whole lot. Makes you nearly as tall as me, Drew, but you're still not as good, <laughs> still not as good, good looking. looking. I know. <laughs> Great fun. Digging through old barns is just the best. It's the top. Blimey, Tom. Uh, How do you go in there? How? Um, uh, well, I've no fat customers, Drew. <laughs> they don't get in. So unless you want me yeah. to consider you fat, I would try very I'm getting hard. in. I'm getting good. in. So how do you get into doing this, Tom? How do you not be interested in... Exactly. Good, how can you not nice, be interested? well-made things that have stood the test of time. Yeah. And that's the biggest test there is. It's like an adventure playground for antique dealers, isn't it? I love it. Oh, cute little desk. How much is that? Uh, it's £600. Is it more like 400 quid? Because it's in here. Uh, no. Worth asking. Um, I don't take offence. I only oh. take offence when it suits me. I find you perfectly tolerable. <laughs> That's the nicest thing anyone's ever said. Oh, I. This has got everything going for it. It's got a wonderful little gallery running three quarters of the way, all the way around the back, and then a quarter way across the desk as well. Its size is really good. It's small. That, that's great. You can fit it in a small flat or house. Everybody needs a desk these days because everybody's sitting there at the computer all the time. It's got loads of storage space and it's in that condition that it is worn but not ruined. It's in the sort of rubbed and gently used condition that I really like. This Victorian leather-topped desk has been stained black and has gold detailing on the edges and a hand-carved rail around the top. It's a quality piece of artisan furniture making from the 1800s which is still in good condition. Four and a half? Eh, uh, that's no good, Drew. No? Uh, no. What can you do? Uh, can we meet a five? I'm very sorry. Really? It has to be 600. Has to be 600. To do me any good. Uh, Tom is sticking to his price, it's 600 pounds. And sometimes you can't look a gift horse in the mouth. Pay the guy his money. I want to be able to come back. Okay, I'll have it. Good man. Thank you. Uh, uh, you know, good thing in its day. Yes. It was quality. Yep. Still is. Yep. Happy with that? What a fantastic pile of stuff we were able to buy. What a brilliant day digging through all this stuff. And I bought really well. If I could do this, this type of picking around for stuff, every single day, from now till the day I drop dead, I'd be very happy.
Brilliant. Loved it. Every second of it. I think there is a profit. So he's happy and I'm happy. And that's how I like business to be. Sorted. All of that. Thank you. Oh, that was good fun. Really enjoyed yeah. it. Great really fun. Really yeah, Thank yeah. you for today. Okay. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Right. Cheers. Thanks. See you again. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye men. Drew's achieved what he wanted to do and is returning to base with several quality items. But with each needing some attention, he wants to get them off the van and into the workshop as soon as possible. Hello. Been up to see Tom Corry. He has got, without doubt, the messiest warehouse I've ever seen in my life. More messy than ours. Unbelievable. Uh oh, your favourite elephant. Yeah, missing, um, missing it. Makes... Tusky. Yeah. And a little bit of, bit of, tiny bit of damage. Um, 140 pound. These that's prices good. are great, actually. But look at the state of the stuff. You know, yeah. it's rough. But that's fine. We can add them. Especially as it's a Howard. Is it? It was outside. In the yard. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, oh, it's Howard's there. No way. It's got a, a plaster rosette underneath there, which yeah. is going to have to be mimicked to, remade to go on there. The top, it was a card table. It would have had a baize over it, probably a green baize. Uh, definitely. You can see the stud holes around the edge and underneath the uh, side here. Yeah. I quite fancy doing it in a red baize. Oh, it'd look gorgeous. Look fabulous in red bays with some brass studding. Yeah, because green are just sort of Just as boring, boring, isn't it? The Howard table is stunning to look at. You just... You can't take your eyes off it, actually. And the stretcher, the sort of barley twist legs that are sort of tapered, it's got everything going for it. It needs work. But it's going to look amazing. Before any of the items of furniture restorer Alex, who immediately spots an issue with the frame. It's obvious that it's been somewhere very wet for a very long time because it's so wobbly, it's almost dancing. If the table's not solid, it can't sell. So the first thing we'll do is get this base solid, and while that glue sets, we'll start getting these carvings made. He hammers small wooden pegs or dowels into the joins, which he fills with glue. Once set, this should re-secure the base. That's the beauty of good timber. You know, you can you can drill and glue it and repair it. There you go. The joint is absolutely bomb-proof and that'll last for another 50 years, whether it's in the rain or not. Next, Alex gets on to one of the trickiest parts of the work, replacing the original rosette carvings. He dusts it with talcum powder as a releasing agent, so the clay... ...that with some clumsy, sort of amateur-looking mould on there, it needs to look like an original. Then he fills the mould with resin, which, once set, can be peeled away. It may need a little bit more tweaking, but if we compare it to the original, I'm happy with that. The mouldings are glued in place, then get a wax to match the existing colour. For the final stage, the table gets to go to master upholsterer Craig. First, he repads the top. So I'm going to glue it onto the top and then trim it off round the edge. That's that side fastened. With the new red base smoothed out and trimmed, Craig can add studs to match the original Howard style. They've got like that worn-off look, that polished sort of look that an antique stud would have. Once the studs have been hammered into place and after a final wipe down, the table's ready. That is going to be a nice statement piece in somebody's house. The hard work pays off. 48 hours later, the table sells to a luxury country hotel and Drew almost doubles his money. Alex did a fabulous job on it, as did Craig. Bang, sold immediately. Quality will always out. You should always buy quality because you'll always sell it. Drew's built his reputation and business on quality, well-made, well-designed items and is always on the lookout for more. He's off on a trip to Gloucestershire on the edge of the Cotswolds. They're heading to a brand new antique shop near the ancient town of Sirencester. Originally, this was an important city for the Roman Empire, and today it's a favourite haunt of celebrities and rock stars. Quite like your music, though, John Bottom. Of course you can't. Really? Yeah. Born here. No way! Yeah. I quite like to live in the Cotswolds. We're off to see a guy called Archie Mackey, and he runs a business called Original House. He rang me and said, look, I've got a really flash showroom, do you want to come and have a look? The real reason that I'm going to see him is, is he, he buys a lot of quality items in original paint and then leaves them alone. Yeah, doesn't tinker with them. Doesn't mess with them. Doesn't paint them white. No. Ruin them. Yeah. The chalk paint brigade. Here we go. This is his new place. Original House is owned by Archie Mackey and sells a mixture of art and furniture. It's opened by appointment only. 
Before I started in the antics world, I studied product design at the university. The idea of sitting in an office and, and being busy with my hands and restoring stuff and making things. So this barn has been recently restored. It was an opportunity to take the space and do something a bit different. So we've set up the gallery selling contemporary paintings. The converted barn is packed with authentic decorative antiques. So Drew's hoping he'll be able to unearth quality items in their raw state today. Archie. Hi, guys. How are you? Good to see you. Nice to see you. Hi, how are we doing? Hi, Archie. Yeah. Hey. This is all a bit, this is a bit swish, isn't it? Yeah, it's all it's been done up recently. Yeah, yeah. lovely. Can yeah. we have a look? Of course, get on in there. Wow. Good. This is, this is good, isn't it? Well, it's a bit tidier than it usually is, that's for sure. <laughs> look at that. Wow. That's, I love one in my garden's a pond. How much are these? That is about four grand. Blimey. Yeah. Yeah. He's got this fantastic showroom, and not just any old showroom, it's really, really good. He worked for Lasco, one of the preeminent names in the architectural salvage world in this country. So he's learned a lot, he's walked away with that knowledge, and he's doing it his own way, and he's doing it exceptionally well. You know, he's uh, a talented young man. Looks great through there, should we have a look through there? Yeah, go for it, follow you. Like that. I think the best thing in the building is that. Yes, I'm quite a fan. How much is that? That is five grand. That's I don't want to sell it price. It is. Yeah. No, it's like it took me quite a long time getting it up on the wall. It's going to stay there for a bit. <laughs> Drew's impressed with Archie's architectural salvage, but he needs to find items he can actually bid on. Gallery uh, mixed in with some furniture. Oh, yeah, this is fantastic. What a brilliant idea. The idea is you dress a piece of furniture with the art and the art dresses the furniture. No flies on you, is there? Well, we're seeing, we're seeing some new very, ideas. very we're clever. Seeing. This is really brilliant. With so much artwork and furniture drawing Drew's eye, it's T who spots something interesting. Oh, look at those. Those chairs are making me laugh because I bought them from a photograph really quickly. I was like, yes, please. You, I, did you imagine they were this big? I thought you could lie on the damn things and they arrived. I was like, seriously, have a really? seat. Get right back in there. Get your newspaper oh, out. These good, are they? great. Yeah. The other night I was lying on the deck with Enzo having a glass of wine and all I could find was loads of old pillows. So I was lying on these pillows thinking, God, this is uncomfortable. I need to find some low... It's beach or patio chairs are made of high-quality, dense fibre rattan. They're possibly from the Italian anti-design school, a movement from the 1960s which played with scale and form to create unique objects. These are fantastic examples of their style and could fetch around £700. I paid a lot of money for, for them. Did you? I mean, 6 50 would be as low as I can get. Really? Drew Pritchard has come to the Cotswolds to visit Antiques Business' original house. Oh, look at those. Those chairs are making me laugh. I thought you could laugh at that <laughs> thing. He's hoping to buy quality original items and has found a pair of unusual beach chairs that he likes so much he wants to keep them for himself. How much are Six fifty would be as low as I can go. No, I know that's a lot for what they are, but I bought them thinking they were twice the size. So I've got to pay for your mistakes. <laughs> Someone had to. <laughs> <laughs> They're five hundred quid, aren't they? I pay. And everybody's going to take one for the team every now and again. Um. There's and six, then you can, you can, quid you can walk away it. then and, and think, I've learned something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning something at 600 quid. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Thank you very much. Marvellous. They are purely and simply for me. Cool, I'm really They're glad totally for me. They're not going on the website. They're not going to be sold. Yeah. They're just for me. Little cushion there. Enzo can easily get on and off. On. <laughs> well, that's very <laughs> yeah. important. Love them. Drew needs to find more pieces he can actually turn a profit on. Bit of fun, isn't it? They're quite cool. Hang from a tree. Yeah, it's hanging from a tree. Yeah. How much are they? 120 quid each. Is that for bottles? No, that came out of a bread factory in Spain. What's that? Um, I don't know what that was for. Because the, the bars are steel, they're solid, it weighs a ton. As I walk in, I lift the sheet on what I thought was a big old birdcage. And it's this bizarre cage for something. It literally is like something off the child catcher thing, isn't it? Chitty bang bang. It's different, it's unusual, it's odd. You know, imagine putting it on some wheels and dragging it about with, with your kids' toys in it or something. Well, your kids, put your kids in it, lock them up. There you go. Being annoying, get in the cage. 
This painted cage dates from the early 20th century. It's constructed from good quality heavy hardwood with steel. It's very well made in order to stop whatever was inside from getting out. With the right buyer, it could be worth up to 600 pounds. How much is it, actually? It's sharp, isn't it? Oh, yeah. here we go. <laughs> what would you offer me for it? Oh. Here we go. 150 quid. I'm never going to take that. <laughs> well, you know, hey. Um, I'm, well, I'm lessening your expectations. Okay. If I said 350 quid. Yeah. 300 quid. Sneaky. 320. Thank you very much. <laughs> Got it for 320 quid. I think I can get fives for this place. It's been exceeded. Um, I'm really pleased with what I've bought. Been in a beautiful area of the country. Uh, and then to see the art gallery. You know, it, it sets the bar a bit higher for everybody. This showroom. They're the first sort of trade people who've been here, so it was really interesting. And they bought a few goodies, which was great. The blue chairs, uh, I was slightly surprised he bought. Uh, he's literally the first person to see them. Good, Good luck fun. with it. Love it. Thanks, Very Thank impressed. You. Back in Clandidno, Rebecca is eager to see if Drew's managed to get his hands on the top quality original pieces from Sirencester. How was Archie? His new barn is yes. absolutely. Amazing. Really? Really good. I bought these. Um, these aren't for sale. They look incredibly comfy. They're really good. Aren't they? Oh, those wonderful little Italian loungers in blue are so comfortable. Um, I can't tell you how comfortable they are. But sadly, nobody's ever going to know that because Drew's not selling them. And then we've got this. This is intriguing. I don't know what it's for. I think it's Indian. The big animal cage that does have this sort of Indian feel to it. It's certainly substantial and heavy. So whatever it was keeping in from escaping must have been quite serious, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The cage is photographed by Alary. Rebecca is so intrigued that she decides to do a bit of digging. I think, with the research I've done, it's connected with um, bringing in exotic and wild animals from foreign lands. We're dating it around late 19th century, sort of the time when the sort of zoological gardens were opening. There were sort of entrepreneurial gentlemen importing animals, putting them in cages, obviously, and either travelling round small towns with them or they were in a fixed place in London or Liverpool. People had only ever seen drawings of a toucan or a tiger. People were just amazed that these... As Drew predicted, quality always sells. The small coffee table and the lamps from Street Marburg are bought by an interior designer in the UK and a client based in Holland. The elephant table from Tom Corrie's sells to a customer in Somerset. And the bold blue beach chairs take pride of place at Drew's house. I'll always go back to places where it's just great stuff, you know, where, where the stuff is just so nice. Tom Corrie's storage leaves a little bit to be desired, but a really nice fellow, and I bought great, you know, I bought brilliantly well from him. Quality will always sell, whether it's really expensive high-end stuff or low-end stuff for 50 to 100 quid, right? Quality will always out. That's what you always want to buy. 